Hey everyone, Clay from Clayviation.com. Today I'm out flying in some gorgeous scenery out in Hawaii, actually on the airport called Kalapapa, Hawaii, which is Papa Hotel Lima Uniform on the island of Molokai. Really fun to fly out here with some gorgeous terrain right on the ocean and a little bit different change of scenery, something you can't do in the real world every day. But what I want to talk about today is the electrical system in our airplane. And we're here in the Airfoil Labs Cessna 172 to take a little bit deeper look at our electrical system. Um, it's fun to play in the a simulated environment where we can play with some of the switches, uh, mess around with some of the components a little bit um, that we might not be able to do in the real airplane. So let's take a little bit of a look at this. This airplane is set up a little bit different than I've seen some of the schematics in a 172, which is fine. If you fly the Airfoil Labs 172, which is a very common, um, very great add-on to X-Plane 11, then uh, this will gain you some familiarity. And uh, of course, if you're kind of using this, these concepts to take to your own training in your own airplane, of course it's necessary for you to look at the schematics and the electrical systems in your own particular airplane, but these concepts shall likely translate easily over to you. So let me start you out with a question. If I were to turn off the master switch in this airplane right here, right now, what would happen? Would we keep flying? Would the airplane, uh, would the engine cut off? Would the engine stay running? What do we lose? What do we keep? Well, for us to understand that, we've got to dig a little bit deeper into our electrical system. Now, right now I have our autopilot flying just kind of here along the coast. So we'll kind of put our head in the cockpit a little bit since we're in the simulator and take a look at some things here. So first of all, we need to understand that all the electrical components in an airplane have circuit breakers, which you probably remember from your checklist. You check that your circuit breakers are in. So you run your fingers along and make sure that nothing is popped out. Now, if you'll notice here closely, if you watch closely, I actually have my, let me see if I can turn this for you, see a little better our DME circuit breaker is actually popped out. The three on this circuit breaker means that it's a three amp circuit breaker. Now here's what that means. If the electrical component, in this case the DME, is pulling more current than three amps through the system, that circuit breaker is gonna open up. Effectively, a circuit breaker is an automatic switch. If that current gets too high, it turns itself off. It opens up the circuit and there's no electricity now flowing. Now, the big question you have to ask yourself is, why did this circuit breaker pop? And if we look down at our DME over here, underneath the radio stack, we can see that our DME is off, right? Well, there is uh, some changing, um, I guess you could say conflicting ideas about exactly how you handle circuit breakers that pop. Um, some would say that you can replace it one time and then if it pops again, not to do it anymore. Now some circuit breakers you can use simply to turn off the actual component if the, your uh, checklist in your airplane says to do so. Now, of course, if that's the case, some of these might have been manually pulled uh, at some point by maybe the last person who flew the airplane and not pushed back in, which is why you always want to check your circuit breakers as the checklist says in your airplane at the beginning of every flight. Now in this case, let me just show you for illustration purposes so we can see both the DME circuit breaker over here and the actual DME over here. If I push this circuit breaker back in, it pops right back out. Take a look. So the problem is you're going, no, turn on, come on, here it goes, let's keep pushing it in. And the problem you'll run into here is you've now got more current flowing through this system. Something is telling this circuit breaker to pop that this overcurrent. Maybe there's some wires chafing back in your DME. I don't know what it is. Of course, the recommendation would be get it on the ground and check it out. But the point is, that's how fires are started, by pushing those breakers in too many times, okay? So that is our circuit breaker. Now, here's something else to understand about circuit breakers while we're flying, is that there are multiple components that are on what's called a bus. Maybe you've heard of the primary bus, the avionics bus. In this case, we do have a primary bus and also avionics bus one and avionics bus two. And you can see on your avionics master switch, you have bus one and bus two. Now, what does that mean? A bus is just simply a common wire that ties together multiple electrical components. Um, think of it like a power strip. You run a power strip out of one of your outlets and you plug in multiple things into it. So if you turn off that power strip, all the things that are plugged in to that power strip turn off 
as well. So you can turn off any of these individual components. If you wanted to, for instance, turn off our uh, GPS here, we could just pull our GPS circuit breaker and now our GPS goes off over here. Okay, you can push it back in and now your GPS is back on. Now, you can also pull one of the bus circuit breakers and in this case everything associated with that bus is going to turn off with it. Pull avionics bus 1. Now I've mapped out everything that actually pulls off this. You lose your clock, you lose your warning lights up top here, you use, lose your Garmin 430 GPS, you actually lose your flaps as well. So with that circuit breaker, avionics bus one popped, you now can't put your flaps down. That's important to know. The intercom up here also goes out. And the fuel pump is also tied to avionics bus one. If you turn, try to turn your fuel pump on, you don't get that fuel pump turning on. So it's important to know the different things and how they are mapped to your particular, um, to the different buses and how your schematic of the particular airplane um, works. And I'll try to map these out for you. I'll go ahead and try to um, work that out and provide a link to you down in the description so you can uh, access how all that is mapped out if you like. Okay, the avionics master switch we briefly talked about. Now this basically is going to turn on and off everything in your radio stack that's just up here. Now why does that happen and why when you're using your starting engine checklist do you turn on your avionics master after the actual engine is running? Well, to protect all the sensitive electronics over here. So when the engine starts up and the alternator's coming online, there's a lot of voltage flowing. In this case, you want to protect these sensitive electronics, which is why you wait until everything's online and stable to pop that avionics master on. Just a little bit of trivia for you there. Okay, let's look outside for just a moment, make sure we're not getting too terribly far away from anything. Everything. Interesting green color Cessna we're flying in today, isn't it? Okay, back to the cockpit. The next thing on the list, let's look at our ammeter. If we zoom in to our ammeter, we can see it just here. Okay, it says amps here. Now, I've got a little bit of a positive charge going on here. Now, so what does the ammeter do? Well, this shows the health of our charging system. Okay, so this is what's important to understand this flow. The battery on the airplane is used to power the starter to crank the airplane. And then once the engine is turning, that turning rotation of the engine physically powers the alternator with a belt, which creates spark for the electrical system. And the turning of the engine also turns over and creates spark in the magnetos, which are basically what's running your ignition. The magnetos provide spark to the spark plugs, which is what's igniting the fuel, which is what's running the engine. Okay. Once the alternator is online, it is going to provide a charge to the battery to top off any of the battery usage that might have happened during that start. And that is what we have right now. I've got our alternator that's giving the battery a little bit of a charge because we're showing a slight positive charge here. Now, if we've got a zero indication, that means that everything is working normally. The battery's not taking a charge, but the alternator's running the system. If we were to show a discharge on this ammeter, that means that the alternator is not charging our, is not providing enough power to our system, rather, um, which is a problem because what that likely means is now your battery power is what's powering your electrical components, and the battery, of course, only has so much juice in it. So it might last 10, 20, 30 minutes, depends on how much um, current is being requested of that battery. So here's the next thing we can do. We're inching closer to the answer of our master switch here. We can take the alternator offline. Our master switch here is a split rocker switch, which means that we have two sides that we can turn on and off. We normally just hit both sides on at once, both sides off at once, but we can also uh, isolate these. So if I were to take my alternator offline, I'm effectively turning off my alternator, which is providing the electrical charge to the system. Take a look at what happens. Our ammeter shows a discharge, as we discussed. That means that now the battery is what's running our airplane. So this is about what it's going to look like if our alternator were to fail. Now the alternator might just not be producing enough energy. It might not be a full failure. Something might be wrong in the system. So it's not always going to show this exact uh, discharge, but that's about what we're going to show. And we've of course got only so much battery life to fly. So if we're going to see this discharge on our ammeter, we're going to want to get this thing 
on the ground. So how about the other side? Well, let's turn our alternator back on here. Okay, now we've got our ammeter that kind of levels out here. That's good. That means that our electrical system is back to normal. Now what happens if we turn our battery side off? Well, in this case, really nothing. The ammeter actually drops to perfectly zero. Now why is that? Well, the alternator is not providing a charge to the battery. That's really what our ammeter is showing uh, because the battery is now off. But the alternator is providing all the electrical power to our systems, which means that we can continue to fly. Obviously, we wouldn't have any battery power should our alternator fail. So in this case, if our alternator were to fail, we would not have any sort of electrical power because we've turned our battery off. These, of course, are hypothetical situations that we're discussing. We wouldn't really fly under these um, conditions. So the big test, let's turn our battery back on. The big test is what happens if we turn our master switch off. Let's see if we're over water. Let's see if we can kind of up the stakes a little bit. Well, we're over land, but that's okay. So let's head down here. Ready? Master switch off. Look at this. The airplane's still flying. The engine is still running. How is this possible with our master switch off? Well, what have we lost? looking inside here. I'm drifting a little bit because I've now lost my autopilot, which has been flying me. Um, but we've lost all of our electrical. Anything electrically powered in the airplane is no longer functioning. Anything that's not electrically powered is still functioning just fine. We have our airspeed. We've got our attitude indicator. We've got our altimeter. Because those are all separate systems. Those are not electronically powered systems. Now our turn coordinator is electrically powered. And you can see our little flag here that shows um, let's zoom in, see if you can see that on our turn coordinator. It says off right here, okay? And that shows us, and you can see when I turn back and forth, normally those wings would be rocking. But that turn coordinator is an electrically powered gyro. So those are just some of the things that we lose in there. Our fuel quantity uh, gauges here, we've also now lost, okay? So the big question is then, what would cause our engine to stop from the perspective of our electrical system? Well, let's go ahead and turn our electrical system back on here. And as these things boot back up, of course I don't have my autopilot, I'm hand flying at this point. But let's go ahead and turn off now our ignition, which are magnetos. The engine seems ideally primed. Now what happens? Okay, at this point we don't have our engine RPM. We can throttle up. I've got nothing. I've now we've now lost our engine. But our electrical system's still running. So why is that? There goes our propeller windmilling. Well, the flow of the airplane system begins with the master switch. And when we turn that master switch on, that's what's going to allow power to go to our starter when we crank up here. So let's actually click over here. Battery is now powering the starter, which turns over the engine. At that point, magnetos also spark, providing spark plug, so sparks to the spark plug rather. Fuel ignites, and our engine is turning. Now that our engine is online, we have an alternator that's being spun by a belt, and that alternator is what is providing system voltage to power everything here as well as topping off our battery with any charge the battery may need. So it helps to understand the flow and how to isolate any systems and gain a deeper understanding of the electricity and the electrical components in your airplane. Study your particular aircraft, or in this case, take this aircraft up in the flight simulator and try it out. Now in the Airfoil Lab Cessna 172 that I'm in, you can actually um, pull these circuit breakers. In the stock airplane, um, unless you know something I don't, you cannot pull those. They won't pull out when you actually go to pull those. So uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, play around with this some. See what you think. Leave me some comments and, and some feedback. Tell me what your thoughts are and enjoy your flying. Until next time.